Thank you, thank you. All of you for organizing this, Make Mothers Matter, LSE, quite an alliance, I must say, and quite an example on how you can mobilize something that is strong in a good cause. So I really appreciate a lot this type of energy that I can see today. Have you heard the Afghan women? Huh? Have you seen how strong they are? Remarkable. This is just a little bit of it. You should have seen how strong they are when they are in the parliament. You should see them in action when they are judges, lawyers, media, soldiers, police, doctors, students, teachers, ambassadors. By the way, this picture is in Baghdad, it is not in Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> I did wear the, uh, the sometimes uh, helmet there, but uh, that was in, in Baghdad. Now, my job today, I believe, based on what you have been uh, suggesting, and I take it uh, seriously, is rather than repeating what you have heard, because you have heard quite compelling messages and a wonderful trail, is actually trying to summarize a little bit where we are and what actually is the question, what can we do, what should we be doing in this occasion, because the timing is perfect. The timing is perfect because the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking because we have a resounding silence on what is being currently discussed between the US government and the Taliban. We have no idea. Only we know that there is a discussion and a negotiation about a withdrawal. But is withdrawal everything? At any cost? You heard it. Not at any cost, and not at the cost of women in Afghanistan. 40, 51 percent of the population are women. And they should not be paying the price for two reasons, if many others. The first one, we have been deluding them. We have been giving them 18 years ago, and I was there myself. I've been three times on, on post in Afghanistan. We have been giving the impression and the feeling that the world will never abandon them. We gave them the impression that, in fact, those of them who would have the courage, and at that time it was even more dangerous, to actually raise their will to want to do something, to study, to get education, to be involved in professional activities, they will be able to continue doing so. That the page was turned. I would like also to remind all ourselves and then about one thing, and perhaps we should ourselves try to remind our own uh, governments and the civil societies in other countries. You were there, some of you perhaps were a little bit too young, but uh, I will certainly remember very well what happened in 9-11. We will never forget it. We were all New Yorkers, you remember? We were all New Yorkers. And the reaction was, we will have to do something of what happened in 9-11 in New York because it did start in an area in Afghanistan. But 50 countries got involved, eh, Andy. 50 countries, NATO, military from all over the world. Every country lost men and women, including the UN. I was in charge of the mission there. And I will never forget when we lost our colleagues in Mazari Sharif. I would never. But that happens to every country who have been involved in it. Did those countries get involved only because they wanted to punish Bin Laden, which by the way had been punished and has been killed? Or was it also, as I want to believe, and I think the public opinion who supported that mission for 17, 18 years now, was also, and in particular, because we were outraged by those scenes of the burqas, lady carrying, and being stoned to death or punished simply because they had listened to music or because they had tried to go to school. That is what should be now the message we should be giving to everyone who is or has an influence on those negotiations. My fear, and the fear of many, including in particular Afghan women, that we may be faced suddenly by December with an announcement and that the announcement will say 
we have found a solution, a peaceful solution. We all want peace. The first ones who want them are the Afghans. They don't want any more conflict. Everyone is tired, and so are the countries who have been involved for 18 years. But not at the cost of going back to the Middle Age for the women. If that takes place, that's not peace. That is simply evacuation, departure, abandonment, betrayal. Now, you could ask me, and since that has been my job in my life, I've been 47 years in 21 conflicts, what can practically be done? We got some messages too, didn't we, today? I think we should be able to remind our governments, those who are being silent at the moment, including, in fact, we should be reminding the US public opinion, because I know many of them, and we have seen it, have been worried about what is, might be happening, including in the Congress, regarding what may happen by a sudden withdrawal without ensuring that the women in Afghanistan will be protected. Well, one thing to do is to insist, because that's practical, insist that the women are on the table of the negotiation. So far they are not. So far it's lip service. Second, that the women issues such as education and jobs should be guaranteed in writing and publicly by the Taliban when and if we hope there will be peace. We all want it. But when and if that is dealt with and announced, that should be transparent in writing and public. Women will be allowed to go to education as they desire, will be allowed to not lose those freedoms they had, will be allowed to actually find and continue having a job. Now, you may say, well, how do we control that? Well, first of all, I think there is a way to control that or to ensure that. And I brought with me a document that I retrieved. I was there, so I, I can. This is a document which is the Tokyo Declaration, which took place 2012. I was there, I was sitting there, I pushed for that. In which, at the beginning, the paper in the Tokyo Declaration, signed by 47 countries and the government of Afghanistan, committed themselves on one side to contribute a lot of money from the taxpayers of the whole world to allow the Afghan government to stand more and more on its own feet in change for contributing to improving the situation in Afghanistan. The original paper had the women mentioned only once, I want you to know, and some of you were there, only once including women. And I remember, and I take pride from it, I stopped the conference. I was representing Italy at the time as Deputy Foreign Minister. And you have an advantage of being in a government because you can stop a conference. In the UN you can't do it as a UN <laughs> You actually help conferences. In that case, I was able to stop it and say, sorry, there is something missing here. Including women? Is that all? And the whole conference was meant about money from the whole world to contribute to the future of Afghanistan. So we stopped the conference for several hours. And you know, conferences which don't end uh, with a photo opportunity are very bad, usually. <laughs> and uh, normally you also need uh, unanimity. If you don't have unanimity, it's not a successful conference. It's half of a conference. So I had leverage for once. <laughs> and the delivery was no photo opportunity unless we change this. And if you look at it, well, I will, six times it was included, especially women. But that could be still lip service. Six times anyway, on various paragraphs. And it should be linked, and here comes the point, with a proportionate contribution of the aid based on assessment of what is the standing the improvement of the women in Afghanistan. That link needs to be there. Because even the Taliban will need, once they are hopefully in a peaceful format inside a coalition government, let's imagine, they also will be very sensitive to the fact that Afghanistan needs resources. And the taxpayers in the world may be potentially 
vulnerable, interested in contributing to even that extra mile only if they will also feel that the compensation for that will be women are not being denigrated back to the Middle Age. So we do have a plan and there are proposals which are not impossible. They are quite simple and quite direct. And we got today even the symbol of the campaign, my friends. What was it? A pen. Imagine that women in the world, famous women in the world, famous or non-famous mothers in the world, would be marching or taking pictures, to be seen whenever they talk with a pen in their hand and saying, this is for the Afghan women. God bless you. Thank you.